Hey, I'm Rob. Welcome back to Third Life. There comes a part of every photographer or filmmaker's career where the colour fidelity of your monitor just ain't hitting it anymore. So that's why you'd eventually want to upgrade to something a little bit more uh, professional grade. This is the BenQ SW321C. Uh, this is one of their flagship models and it's all about colour accuracy. Now it's aimed mostly at photographers but as you'll see from the specs it'll work completely fine for video too. One of the first things you'll notice that's different over a standard monitor is the price. It's about 1500 quid. This model, as you can tell by its name, is 32 inches. Absolutely massive for a computer monitor. Uh, comes in a 3840 by 2160 resolution, 4K. Now it's an IPS panel. Uh, and the advantages IPS gives you over other technologies is its superior colour accuracy. Um, it has really wide viewing angles. Uh, and it's got pretty good anti-glare tech built kind of into the screen itself. But yeah, this is definitely a reference monitor. It's not very vibrant, it's very flat. It's definitely just for kind of getting as close to real life colours as possible so you know exactly what you're working with. IPS panels can have quite a slow response time though, so I wouldn't recommend this for gaming at all. One of the first things I noticed about the monitor when getting it out of the box is how matte the screen is. It's definitely one of the most matte screens I've ever seen. That means it is super good at rejecting glare and reflections from uh, nearby light sources. And if you really want to make sure you're not getting any glare or light pollution onto the screen, it comes with an included hood. It's made out of quite nice heavy duty plastic, just snaps on round the sides. Now BenQ uh, calibrate every display that comes out of the factory with their AQ Color technology. They include a handy dandy report in the box so you can see exactly the color accuracy of your display. They say this tech can match all their displays even coming out of different factories which is very good if you want to pair a couple of these together for a multi-monitor setup. Now whether or not you believe the colour report they include in the box, uh, I would probably recommend renting or getting a colour calibrator for this display eventually anyway as it might be very colour accurate out of the box but over time any monitor, doesn't matter how accurate it is, will slowly drift off. Speaking of which, the BenQ monitors load their colour calibration onto the monitor itself so you don't have to worry about any apps running in the background, switching your profiles, it's just all done in the screen and you can use a lot of third party calibrators to do so. We've been using the iDisplay Pro Plus uh, which is completely usable and it does the job. It's also a very uniform screen, they, they pride themselves over how the edges of the screen are as colour accurate as the centre, which you don't find with very many other monitors. Supports up to 10 bit colour, 99% of the Adobe RGB colour space, 100% of sRGB and Rec. 709, which is great for video, uh, and 95% of P3. Work a lot with print, their Paper Colour Sync app is really, really useful. It allows you to click on the type of printer and the type of paper you're using and it will emulate that on your screen so you can see how your pictures are going to look before you even hit print. Now the I.O. is pretty good, it has two HDMI ports and a DisplayPoint 1.4 in there as well. Uh, included USB 3 hub uh, and an SD card slot. It also has a USB-C port which can carry video, data and power. So it might be a perfect docking station for a MacBook or other laptops. Their hotkey puck is quite interesting. It's a controller for the monitor itself which is way better than using the on-screen buttons. It also has a few fancy features, like you can fully customise these buttons, but by default you can switch easily and quickly between three different colour modes. It also has this nice little circle spot beneath the monitor so you have a nice place to put it and it's not just kind of hovering around your desk all the time. I actually really like this puck. One thing that they don't promise, but like I would really like this to see, is if they could maybe do an update where you could actually use this puck in apps like Adobe Premiere or in Photoshop for example and use this as like a bit of a jog wheel it'd be really really nice to use this. They could maybe do it over the USB connection for example but I'd love to see the controller support go into Windows or into Mac OS and be able to control apps that way as well. Unlike Apple this screen actually comes with a stand and it's pretty heavy duty too seeing as how heavy this monitor is. Uh, it has full height adjustment, swivel and it can rotate 90 degrees as well. But yeah the monitor might be big. Pretty pretty goddamn mahoosive. 32 inches on a desk is pretty big but that doesn't compare to anything but like the size of the, <laughs> the box itself which I couldn't even fit on the screen. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it and you'll see it. it's so big. It's so big it probably won't even fit. <laughs> 
It's this big because they put a lot of care into making sure this monitor doesn't get broken in uh, shipping. And it also fits the whole hood and the massive stand as well, so big old box. Overall, this monitor has pretty big bezels. They're not the biggest, but compared to a lot of monitors you see nowadays, uh, and with the hood, it can be not that appealing to the eye. It's got quite a slow pixel response time and quite a bit of latency. Um, so like gaming is pretty much off the table, although you can do it and it's not that bad of an experience. The IO might be good, but uh, it's kind of recessed up and behind the monitor itself uh, and it can be a little bit hard to get to. In the guide it actually tells you to rot rotate the screen 90 degrees to get at it, which isn't ideal and especially that SD card slot on the side is quite hard to reach around the whole screen. It'd be nice if they were a bit more flush with the side of the screen. But this screen has absolutely incredible colour accuracy. It's fairly easy to use for something this professional. Uh, usually you find they have so many settings, so many whistles and features that you kind of get lost in what everything does, where well, this kind of makes it pretty simple and easy to use. So you can kind of just get to work without having to do much set up at all and calibration's a breeze. It gives you absolutely tons of options for colour spaces and the hotkey puck enables you to switch so easily and quickly between them so you could work in so many different colour spaces without wasting any of your time switching. Um, and all the calibration and LUTs are all stored in the monitor itself. You can plug any computer into this and it'll already be ready and calibrated for you to go. They even have what they call an MBook colour profile, which is perfect for matching it to uh, a MacBook, an Apple MacBook or an Apple Mac. So if you're the kind of guy that works on a MacBook and you like the colours of a MacBook, you can uh, recreate them on this, uh, but probably with better accuracy and better uniformity than your MacBook screen itself. Uh, but still are familiar with the colour space you're working in. The hood, by the way, even has a little slot for your colour calibrator so you can leave it on your monitor while you're calibrating. Which is a nice little design touch that you appreciate and you realise they have kind of thought about this monitor and how it will be used. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this monitor. It's definitely a step up from what I used to be using and it's kind of ruined every other monitor for working for me as I can just tell the colours are way off on everything I'm using. Let me know your thoughts on a monitor like this in the comments below. Would you think about buying one? Would you buy one? Would you buy something else? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, but I've been Rob, this has been Photobyte. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.